you are going to replicate Galileo's experiment. And the only pieces of information that we're going to know in advance is the height at which our ball rolls off the table toward the ground. You're going to know that height here. Okay? You're going to know the angle of the incline that you have. You're going to take a piece of cardboard and use that for this incline plane. You'll know this angle theta. And then you'll know the distance that your object is rolling down that piece of cardboard, which will be your incline plane. So you'll know that distance. From those three pieces of information, you can calculate what the range should be based on, on these, these equations. And this is making a lot of assumptions. We're assuming a lot of things. We're assuming there's no friction. We're assuming that there's no energy lost because our ball is rolling down the plane not just sliding down the plane. Okay, We're going to lose uh, energy because the ball might roll down and do, do a little bit of a bouncy path as it's going down because our cardboard isn't perfectly straight. It might deviate on some angle. You might not get the perfect angle of measurement with the protractor. There's going to be a lot of reasons why. We're going to have a large margin of error in this experiment. So whenever you compare your calculations to the experiment you do, you might find an, a percent error of 50% or more. But that's OK, because it's an experiment. We're going to do the calculations here. And your job, then, is to also think about all of the things that could have possibly happened in your experiment that contributed to the fact that you ended up with such a large percent error. If we had a perfect physics world, if we were in a perfect vacuum, <laughs> and everything operated without friction, okay, then we would match the quantity that we calculate here with your experiment. But um, it turns out that that's not going to be the case, especially when we take into account in future parts of this class the fact that our marble wasn't just sliding straight down the path. It, straight down the incline, it was actually rolling. And when an object is rolling, it has rotational energy. And that rotational energy can take away some of the energy from the kinetic energy that creates, in the end, the speed at which your object is rolling down the plane. So in any case, there's a lot of places in this experiment where you could lose energy or um, not end up with these values that we're going to calculate here. Okay, So I'm going to show you how you would do the calculation, and then you're going to compare those with your experiment. So we just have this, these pieces of information right here. We want to figure out what the range should be. Okay, And all the stuff we did in the pre-lab, we're using all that information right here. Okay, So let's just start with um, so we want to figure out what this range should be. Let's write down that equation. So I'm going to use this. Our final x position away from the edge of the table should equal 1 half times our acceleration in the x direction, t squared, plus v initial velocity in the horizontal direction, times time plus initial x position. So if I say at the end of my table here, I can say x is equal to 0 there. This term goes to 0. Um, then we have no acceleration in the horizontal direction once we're executing free fall. So this term is zero. So this distance right here from the edge of the table to where we land with the marble is going to equal the initial velocity at which it was launched up here, the horizontal velocity, times the time it takes to fall to the ground. Okay. So we don't know what this velocity is yet. We don't know the time it takes to fall to the ground yet. So maybe let's take care of the time it takes to fall to the ground first. Okay, And to do that, we can use our equation for motion in the horizontal direction when we're in free fall. So y is equal to 1 half a acceleration in the y direction, t squared, plus the initial velocity in the y direction, t plus our initial y position. So again, I'm going to say y is equal to 0 up here at the top of the table. So that's 0. Our initial y velocity is 0. So I solved this equation for t. We've already done this before in the pre-lab. So 2y over our acceleration in the y direction square root is equal to 
the time it takes to fall. Okay, so then um, that is what we put in for this range equation right here. So this is ultimately the value we want to get to in the end, but there's a lot of steps we have to do to get there. So if we use the values that I have here, the time it will take us to fall to the ground is going to be the square root of two. I'm gonna say that the height of my table is one meter, okay? So the final y position when my object falls, if I say y is equal to zero up here where the object leaves the table, the final y position here is minus one meter. So our time to fall will be the square root of two times minus one meter over our acceleration due to gravity, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So the time to fall will be 0 0.452 seconds, okay? So I'm gonna take that time, that's the time that goes in right here, okay? This is t to fall. And I'm gonna put, so this is where we wanna end up. <laughs> this is part of where, how we're gonna get there. We gotta figure out now what is this velocity at which we leave to start our projectile motion. That velocity comes from our ball rolling down the plane. So now we have to do the part of the problem where it was the rolling down the plane part of the problem. So um, we can use this equation that we were working through in, one, in part of the pre-lab. The velocity of our object parallel to our inclined plane when it reaches the bottom is equal to the acceleration parallel to the plane times time to go down the plane. So we'll call that t plane, okay? Plus the initial velocity at which that ball um, was released on the plane. So that initial velocity here is zero. We figured out earlier what the acceleration parallel to the plane was. And that was g sine theta times the time it takes us to roll down the plane. And so remember how we found the time it takes us to roll down the plane? We thought about this distance that we were rolling down the plane first. And so that distance, which I call d parallel, that distance down the plane, so we call that d parallel here, equals one half times our acceleration parallel to the plane times the time it takes to roll down the plane squared <laughs> plus our initial velocity parallel to the plane times time plus our initial position parallel to the plane, okay? So we'll say that our initial position parallel to the inclined plane, we all call that zero. We're releasing that object from rest, so this term is zero. So the time it takes us uh, to go down the plane, if we solve this, will be two times the distance down the plane it rolls over the acceleration parallel to the plane square root, okay? And that's the time to roll down the plane. You see how this equation looks kind of similar to the equation over here for the time it took us to fall, okay? Similar form of the equation. So if we plug in the values here, square root of t times, I'm gonna say the distance we roll down the plane is going to be for this experiment, ten, uh, of this experiment, um, 10 centimeters, okay? Um, 10 centimeters, you're gonna to wanna to write this, you're gonna to wanna to convert this to meters. You're gonna write this as 0.1 meters. Why? Because when we're using the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. You've got the meters in there, and so you've gotta use all distances in the problem in units of meters. So we're gonna take that two times 0 0.1 meters divided by our acceleration parallel to the plane, which was um, g, so that's a 9.8 
meters per second squared times sine, and I'm going to say that the angle that we're going down the plane is 40 degrees. Okay? Sine 40 degrees. So, the time down the plane, if we calculate this right here, is going to be zero point one seven eight seconds. So I can take this time, this was the T down the plane, okay, and this time goes in right here, okay? So you take that time times g sine theta, g was 9.8 meters per second squared, theta was our 40 degrees, so our v parallel to the plane, the v, the velocity of our ball when it reached the bottom of the plane is going to be 1.12 meters per second. Okay, that's v parallel to the plane. So, now we're there. We take this velocity and you stick it in right here for our equation for the range. Because this velocity is the velocity that our ball has when it reaches the bottom of the inclined plane, the same velocity as it travels across the flat part of the table. That's the same velocity at which, the horizontal velocity at which our ball leaves the table to start executing projectile motion. Okay, so then our range equation, x is equal to the velocity of our ball when it reached the bottom of the inclined plane, which is 1.12 meters per second, times the time it takes us to fall to the ground, which we calculated right here, okay, of 0 0.452 seconds. So you should find that this range is equal to 0 0.51 meters, okay? So all of that work is what we needed to do in order to find out how far our ball leaves, or how far our ball ends up from the edge of the table after it's rolled down the table, this little flat part executing projectile motion to the ground, okay? So this is how you do the calculation. You're gonna do this twice. You're gonna do this, you're gonna have the same angle every time. You're gonna have a 20 degree angle in the um, experiment. You're gonna do it for two different distances down the plane, 10 centimeters and 20 centimeters. Okay, the height above the ground, that will be dependent on whichever object you choose to do your experiment on top of, okay? And then you're gonna calculate the range. So you'll have to do this calculation the way I've laid it out here. You'll have to do it twice in order to get what your range should be, okay? So I had a, when we did this problem, I used 10 centimeters for the distance down the plane, but I had a larger angle. When you have a larger angle, that gives you a larger velocity when you reach down the bottom of the incline. So you're gonna use a smaller angle here, your velocity, at least for the distance down the plane, for the 10 centimeter traveling distance down the plane, that velocity you should find will be a little bit smaller than this 1.12 meters per second, okay? So I want you to do these calculations. I want you to try it out and see what the answer should be and how it compares to your experiment. So if you have any questions about did you do it right, um, did you get the right values for these calculations, you can always visit me during my office hours because you're going to want to include these calculations as part of your lab report.